Hey guys, welcome back to my channel and thank you so much for watching. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you how I made this gravity-defying Guinness-themed beer mug cake in celebration of St. Patrick's Day. Don't forget to subscribe for new videos every week and give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. That being said, let's get right into it. I'm starting out with three five inch cakes that I have leveled and I did dye them different shades of green just as an extra little St. Patrick's nod. I'm stacking those up with some vanilla buttercream in between and just using my small offset spatula to make sure my buttercream is nice and level before I add the next layer. I definitely wanted this to be an ombre green and as I'm watching the video, I realized that I put the lightest color at the bottom and worked my way up. So not what I was going for, but it was still cute. Once it was stacked up, I'm adding a thin layer of buttercream all around the outside to lock in the crumbs. This was a very moist cake, so this step is very crucial to make sure that the final ice isn't lumpy and bumpy. I put that in the fridge for about 25 minutes to chill, and then when I could touch my finger to the buttercream and none of it came off, it was ready for the final ice. So I'm starting with a dollop of buttercream on the top and then just smoothing that out with my spatula, trying to get it as level as possible, and then piling that on the sides, being pretty heavy handed. And then with my bench scraper, I'm going around the sides. I got down at eye level for this, making sure my bench scraper was straight up and down, not at an angle. And then I'm just scraping that away until the sides were perfectly smooth. For all that buttercream that accumulated on the top edge of my cake, I'm just gently pulling that into the center with my bench scraper, being careful not to mess up my nice level top. I put that back in the fridge to chill and now I'm going to start on my fondant. I have this darker brown color here that I'm rolling out into like a longer rectangle shape. I measured the height of my mug and I am just marking that out on my fondant so I know how wide I need it to be. To get the wood grain effect, I do have this embosser here. It didn't quite reach the bottom, so I did go back in with my fondant tool and just extend the lines down. And if you don't have an embosser, you could just do the whole thing like that, just marking lines all the way down, trying to recreate those little knots of wood. I'm gonna be cutting this up into panels using my pizza cutter. So I'm just marking off two inches on either side so that they're all gonna be roughly the same shape. While my cake was still cold, I'm adding those panels on there, just trying to get them on as straight as possible. Some of them weren't completely up and down. That's okay, it's supposed to look like a rustic mug, so I wasn't too worried about it. I just went back in on the sides with my fondant smoother to help straighten them out as much as I could before I added the next piece. I decided to do this more rustic theme because when I think of like Guinness and Ireland, I think of like this really old pub I went to when I was there called the Grave Diggers Pub, I believe. And it was like super, super old and really cool. And this whole vibe, I really just associate that with Ireland now. Like I had my first sip of Guinness there and it like practically took my skin off because it was just like intense. I'm not a fan of beer at all. So Guinness is an acquired taste, I'd say. To make the handle, I'm rolling out more of my brown fondant and I did add some Tylos powder to this. I'm making it fairly thick because I want some wooden skewers to be able to stick into this. I'm cutting off one side and then with my X-Acto knife, I'm gonna mark in the rough outline of my mug. I got distracted watching The Office, so my fondant dried a little harder than I would have liked while I was cutting this, so you can see my struggle as I try to figure out how to cut through this with a knife and my X-Acto knife. Thank you. 
I cut out the middle portion as well, just making sure I had a nice handle type shape. And then I rearranged it according to how I wanted it to sit on the mug. I started out with this C shape, but I ended up going for like more of a long, skinnier handle. I cleaned up any rough spots with my fingers and then I'm inserting two wooden skewers into each end, trying to arrange them so that they can stick quite a ways in and they're not gonna poke out anywhere. And then I left this to dry almost completely. I'm rolling out some gray fondant into this U shape for the board and I'm embossing that with this cobblestone type thingy I have. I rub some shortening on the board and I'm just wrapping that gray fondant around, making sure that it's right up against the cake nice and snug. And then I just cut a seam at the back and then trimmed away the excess around the edges of the board. I cut out two long strips of like almost black, really deep, deep brown fondant, and I'm wrapping that around the bottom and the top of my cake. I just brushed the back with a little bit of shortening because I knew that wasn't going on straight the first go, so I just wanted to be able to move it around a little bit. I have this jewel gum paste mold and I'm just using the same color I used for those bands going around the mug. And I'm just making a bunch of these little square gem shapes. And once they've dried, I'm brushing them very lightly with a little bit of gold luster dust. I don't want them to be solid gold. I want them to look like more like a dirty gold. I rubbed the back of each one with a little bit of shortening and I'm going to place those down along those darker bands, just spacing them out as evenly as I can. I didn't have a long enough dowel, so I'm using two wooden skewers that I placed side by side and I'm placing those into the top of the cake, kind of at an angle. I've already cleaned out this can, so it's nice and dry and I'm placing that on there, just trying to get a rough idea of where it's gonna sit and then I'm marking it off where the dowel is going to start coming out so I know how high up I need to put my fondant. So I'm using another dark shade of brown for this. I did make sure it was different than the bands going around the mug, but Guinness is like, it almost looks black when you pour it into a mug, so it is a darker beer. I started out by wrapping that around the wooden skewers, just going up to where I marked that line in and trying to blend it together to be one piece. Next, I rolled out some really long teardrop shapes of that same color, a couple different sizes, and then just placed them all over my main piece. I put the can back in place and then I added a little bit of fondant just going into the can, just so it gives it a little more security, and it looked like this. I put some white buttercream into a piping bag and I'm gonna start putting that all over the top just kind of swirling it on there, making some blobbies, just creating some texture. I inserted my wooden skewers where I wanted them to sit on the cake and then I decided to add my handle onto that just so I had a little bit of movability. That's why I didn't want it to be completely dry before I added it because I knew I wanted to shape it a little bit once it was on the cake. I put my buttercream into a smaller piping bag and I'm completely blocking the shot, but I am adding some smaller blobbies trailing down from the larger blobbies. So when it was all finished guys, it looked like this. This is actually like a really simple cake to do, but it looks really impressive. People are always mooning on over them because they can't really figure out how you did it, but really it's super simple. And then when you cut into it, it's nice and green inside and festive for St. Patrick's Day. 
I completely massacred this cake trying to cut it, which is why I don't normally do like cutting shots because for some reason they always just like fall apart and don't look pretty when I try. But regardless, I hope you enjoyed this video, guys. If you are going out for St. Patrick's Day, this is a great little treat to bring for your friends. Stay safe out there. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.